putting all these eggs in. Do, 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 do. The workers then feed the bee, the, the eggs. And they'll feed it with a substance out of its um, head. There's a little gland on their heads that they feed, that produces something called royal jelly. They feed it for three days to every egg. After three days, those eggs get fed pollen and honey and such, and 20 so days later, a worker bee comes out. We'll talk about workers. But if those same workers who are feeding along there think that the queen, their current queen, is not laying enough eggs, maybe she's getting sick, isn't having a good pattern to the, to the lay and something, something's wrong with their queen, they will take one of those eggs, just another one along the line, and the workers, as a group, decide this is our new queen. They will feed it royal jelly for 16 days, and that becomes a queen. So there's nothing different about the egg. It just gets royal jelly for the full time and not just for three days. Once that queen um, is hatched, leaves the hive, meets up with the drones and mates. We'll mate with six to eight or ten different drones, comes back to the hive, does not leave the hive again, and now there's two queens in the hive. So the workers will do what they call balling the queen. They will swarm around the, their old queen, suffocate her, and she dies. So the ultimate democracy. The queen's in charge until the workers decide the queen's no longer in charge and they put a new one in charge. Because she slips up. <laughs> so you may be called the queen bee, but you may not want to be the queen bee ladies because they're in charge. So she produces something called a queen substance. The queen substance is just a pheromone that lets the rest of the hive know, I'm the queen, I am here, all is well and the workers go about their business. If a queen, say the queen just dies, then they can make a new queen during the short time, but during that time, the hive's not really happy because the queen's not there. Um, they can live, this says up to six years, three years is really the max that a queen will live. Most are two to three years that a queen lives. Um, so they're much longer li lived than any of the others. Um, they're fed by the worker. And getting old is one of the reasons that, that the workers were replaced. Yeah. The hive continues. Right. The hive continues. Right. They high continues. They're like, oh, okay. she's not laying as many eggs. She's getting old. Okay, let's make a new one. Let's go. So. I said that about my wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Watch the it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the workers will, we'll, we'll show you here in the next slide. It's fine. But the, the workers will live anywhere from during the summer. Six weeks is, is a worker. During the winter, it can be four to five months because they're not doing too much, they're just kind of existing. But So she greatly outlives all the others. The workers literally work themselves to death. They will just be, they'll be flying out, doing their job, working, and the wings will just give out and they'll crash and die. So they, they work to, to death. Um, the queen is fed by, you know, while she's going along laying eggs, she doesn't have time to do a bunch of other stuff. So. She's fed by the workers, she's cleaned up by the workers, they take care of the queen the whole time. Um, she can sting multiple times. Her stinger is not barbed, but since she doesn't leave the hive, you're not going to get stung by a queen. So one queen, you're probably never going to be stung by the, by the queen. Um, if two queens show up, oh, look at that, um, then there is the ability for the queens to fight, and they've got stingers, and they can sting each other multiple times. But So workers, they're the smallest. There's 40 to 60,000 of them in a hive, in a full healthy hive. They have 21 days to become an, um, an adult. When they hatch from their little cocoon from the cells, they are adult bees and ready to go to work. And they start their first job when they come out of the cell is to turn right back around, clean out that cell, ready for the next egg to come along, because that queen's coming along to put eggs. And then they start doing their different tasks and start working. All workers are female. Anyone doing work is a female. 
We know that. I know. This is nothing new. This is all going. You're like, nature is in charge here, right? We figured that out? As soon as we're no longer young, the guys kill us off. That's right. You kill off and you're out. The, the worker will have multiple jobs during her lifetime. She will, sorry, I keep turning this in. She will be, we have, can you hand one of those behind you? Trying to leave what I wrote. <laughs> so she's doing this. I'm like, okay, someone doesn't have a handout. Boy, well, she's happy now. Yes. Yeah, like, Whoa. Um, the women happy. So they may be in they, for during their lifetime. They may be a nurse bee, so to feed the young and the larvae and all that. They may be a mortuary bee, taking the bees out. They may be a guard bee at the entrance to make sure that only bees from their hive are coming in. They will then become eventually a foraging bee and go out and get pollen and water for the hive. So there's a lot that these bees are doing throughout their lifetime. They are, um, during late spring, summer, and fall, they'll live about six weeks, as I said. Um, winter is four to five months. They keep the inside of the hive at 97 degrees, always. I don't care if it's 120 outside or it's 30 degrees outside, the inside of the hive is kept to 97 degrees. They do that either by getting all the bees inside, where they produce warmth, or they will go outside the hive and hang on the edge of the hive where the holes in the edge of the hive are, and they'll hang on each other, and they'll flap their wings so much that it'll draw air into the hive to cool the hive. Other bees will go out and get water, take little droplets of water back into the hive with them and place it in parts of the hive so that air coming in, you've got a swamp cooler. And they let the wa evaporating water cool the hive to keep it at 97 degrees. Because the larvae and the young need that temperature to live. They will also, when they're placing those eggs in the, in the hive, they will leave little holes occasionally where they won't put an egg. Because when it starts to get too cool, Bees will then stick their whole body inside that hole, and you have radiant heat to get to the larvae around them to keep them at the right temperatures. Um, they are deaf to most sounds. So the thunder last night, they didn't really hear that, didn't, didn't bother them at all. Um, but they don't like rain and getting wet. And they also, once it gets, starts to get dark, all the bees come into the hive. So they're not out flying around at, at night in the dark. Early morning, they start to come back out. The sun, usually you'll put your hive in a place so if the sun hits them well, in the morning they come out and they start working during the day and then they go back into the hive at night. Um, so which is why if you were going to ever move a hive, you do it at night. You wait until it gets dark, all the hot bees are in, you seal it up, and then you move it at night. <coughs> so then you don't lose half your hive who's out doing other things. And do it. They say if you're gonna move a hive, um, you move it either two feet or two miles. Because moving it just a little bit, so if you want to move from one side of the yard to the other, you move it a little bit, you wait a couple days, you move it a little bit again, and you keep moving it so that the bees can reorientate themselves to something new. Or you just pick it up at night, you move it to a whole new location, they get up in the morning, they go, whoa, everything's different. Okay, now I figure out where I am now, and they just kind of go on their way again. But if you just moved it to the side, you'd find all the bees coming back to this location that they thought was where their home was. And they're not, they have a hard time finding it again. So, um, so a bee finds where the pollen is. They've got to let everybody else know, their, their sisters know, where are, where is this pollen is. So they do something called the waggle dance. And it's... Incredible. So they will come, and they've done these, all these studies with this, and I've watched them be able to do, I've watched them do the waggle dance. So a bee will go off, they find where their pollen is, and they will then fly back to the hive, and think of the comb, the comb stands straight up and down. They picture that, and they say, okay, and they will waggle back and forth their, their bottom as they dance, and they'll move straight up in a line, and then they'll come back around, and they'll do the dance again, and come the other side, and come back again. And what they're doing there is the length of that dance says how far it is to the pollen. But then, 